tonight's subject is going to be around Silver Lake. And uh, I'm going to ask that our guests go round robin. I'll start to my left with the town manager. And if you just give your names and why you're here tonight in terms of role. And uh, I don't know, doesn't count, okay? Good evening. I'm Sue Lassard, and I am the town manager here in Bucksport. And I believe I was asked to participate in this forum to discuss some of the history of the town's relationship with its water supply and its um, use as an industrial water source, um, which has been another role for the lake. My cause. Um, I have a 55 and older community in Bucksport and it's on Silver Lake, and I think we have some assets and some people that would be willing to help out um, in any kind of program to help the lake, so, so we're willing to help. Is that the Silver Lake Estates? Yes, it is, yep. Thank you very yep. much. They're on. Yes, hello, um, Lucy Leaf. I'm from um, Surrey, actually, neighboring town, uh, with the Toddy Pond Association, and I was involved um, this summer um, in helping to manage a, um, a courtesy boat inspection program to, to reduce the um, amount of invasive plants that might enter the lake and to educate boaters. Um, and I've also done quite a bit of uh, plant patrols called um, on the lake uh, as a volunteer. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Jane Dillingham. I'm the manager of water quality for Maine Water Company. I am a biologist. I've spent many years um, studying lakes and working with invasive plants and um, programs to help keep uh, invasive plants out of lakes. And I was also um, spent about 15 years with the Volunteer Lake Monitoring so Association as vice president and president um, at different times. And um, just I'm here um, tonight um, representing Maine Water Company uh, on behalf of the drinking water supply. And um, it's really important for me to be here tonight because there hasn't historically been a lot of effort to um, prevent invasive plants or do monitoring on the lake itself. Um, and so this year we got to jumpstart that and I wanna see that continue. Thank you. The man who should be superintendent. <laughs> no. My name is Jamie Bowden. I'm a plant operator for Maine Water Company here in Bucksport. Uh, worked at the drinking water plant and also the, run the uh, wastewater plant down over the hill. So, uh, yeah, I just know the ins and outs of water quality come into the plant and going out. And also work for the fire department here in town, so know how important the resource is for us to have here in town even before I worked for a water company. Um, I am Hans Krischels. I'm a citizen here in Bucksport. I'm not sure what my function is here beyond, I mean, it struck me as really kind of strange that we didn't take better care of our water. I've always thought that was the duty of citizens of the town to take care of their water supply. And so I did get in touch with Mary Jane Dillingham, Lucy Leaf, Mark, and Sue Lassard to, um, to try to get all of this to happen so that we could have some sort of a forum to bring this issue to the people of Bucksport and hopefully generate a workforce through Mike, but also other volunteers in the town who are willing to take on this plant patrolling and the courtesy boat inspection. So, thank you. Thank you, Hans, for being here. Um, the question, I think, on a lot of people's minds tonight, and I'm just going to open this up and then give people a chance to respond, um, and that is this. Um, what can you tell us about Silver Lake right now? I know there's been some testing. Um, I know we have a history. Maybe you want to get into the history a little bit, Sue, or not. <laughs> the, uh, by what that I meant that the, the who owns what and who, who's in charge of what, um, for Silver Lake is sometimes not clear to people in that people make assumptions that the town has the um, legal rights to the water and 
and that's not accurate. Uh, Maine Water Company has uh, water rights to Silver Lake, as does AIM, American Iron and Metal, has water rights to that um, location um, to a certain number of gallons per day they're allowed for extraction. But a number of years ago, and long before I came to Bucksport, the Bucksport Water Company um, converted to, it wasn't main water at the time, it was another name, but it's the same entity. And so um, now main water's role is, to, is with the drinking water and, and what's necessary to maintain that. Um, the, when the town was approached earlier this year, actually it was Hans who came to talk to me about it. Um, certainly what, whether we own it or not, it's the drinking su water supply for our community and it, we certainly want it to be as safe, healthy, and et cetera as possible. So the idea of the um, education program and boat inspection program emerged, but we did what Bucksport does when it's, is we partnered. And the Toddy Pond uh, Association and Lucy were very instrumental in allowing this to move forward in this year. If we had had to organize and, and try to bring everything to bear in this season, we couldn't have done it. But we partnered with an organization that already did that kind of work and um, the council was 100% supportive of that effort and we're pleased to see the report that was issued um, most recently um, as part of that effort and I, I really think it went very well and, and is a model for how we can move this forward. Whether there's a, a local organization that's formed to do this or, or however we have a path to continuing this that I think will be supported. Thank you. Um, Mary Jane, I'm going to come over to you. And can you talk a little bit about Maine Power and what's going on with that? So um, Maine Water um, does not own any land um, on Silver Lake itself. We have rights to the water supply. Um, basically, we have an intake out into the lake, and the water level needs to be maintained above the top of the um, intake structure. And that will guarantee that we have adequate water for the citizens of, of Bucksport. We average about six and a half million gallons of water a day. Do I have that right? Yeah, th three, three to six um, million gallons of water a day. Yeah. But um, that, that is important that we have that capacity, not just for drinking water, but also for your everyday uses and especially for fire protection, right? And that water has to have a certain quality in order for our filters to work properly and disinfect the water um, and take out the turbidity, the cloudiness of the water, um, and any of the organics that are in the water and pathogens. So protecting the lake is key to making sure that we're guaranteeing that quality of water that you're receiving in, in the town. And it's really important that we all do our part in taking that responsibility on to protect the lake. So I think that this is the chronology of this effort was Hans reaching out to the superintendent, the superintendent reaching out to me because he knew that um, my background was, was very much involved in watershed protection. And then Hans reaching out to, um, and it just blossomed from there. Um, reaching out to Mike and, and Lucy with, with her experience with Toddy Pond and having a mechanism to actually make this program work. Um, was so, it, it went as well as it could go. I, it, it was just remarkable in my mind. Um, and I see you, you nodding because it really was. Um, but I, 
I really want to congratulate Lucy because she was that key um, that made it all happen. So we got boat inspections um, done this year um, to help make sure that invasive plants don't get into the lake. And why is that important? Because invasive plants out-compete all the other plants. And it can turn a beautiful lake into a mess. And, and it can increase organics. It, can, it, it takes phosphorus out of the substrate at the bottom of the lake, brings it to the surface, and makes it usable. And we know what phosphorus does in your garden. It'll do the same thing in a lake, right? So we don't want all those things that follow um, that source of, of uh, nutrient in a lake. So that's one protection for the lake. There are, there are other things that people can do um, and it really is about making sure that we're not adding, every, every person um, does not contribute to pollution of Silver Lake. And I think that this is a great way when we have a boat inspector, or we have people monitoring the lake, that people are seeing that. It, it's real and it's part of the community. So kudos to this community, um, the way this happened and the support that, that came forward. Um, and there's more to be done. Um, the quality of, your, of, of the lake is, is very good. Um, it allows us to treat the water um, without really um, a lot of effort to take out any contaminants um, in, the, in the lake that's found in the lake. Um, so we're in a good spot right now, so let's keep it that way. And I think that's where you have a precious gem right there, and, and you can have recreation, and you can have people living around the lake, um, but it has to be done in a, in a responsible, sustainable manner in order to have this water supply available to this community for your children and grandchildren, their children. Um, we can do this, it can happen. Um, and I just am really excited to be part of it. Thank you. I'd like to bounce over to you, Lucy, as a catalyst, and um, both Sue and, and Mary Jane have talked about the partnerships, and uh, would you be willing to speak to how that worked with this? Yes. Yes, um, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this definitely uh, was a, a partnership all the way around. Um, quite a few people and entities involved. I got involved because of my involvement with Hancock County Soil and Water. Uh, and um, we came to a meeting that Hans Kershaw started, or um, put on with um, Bucksport Next, right? Um, you know, and then, um, <laughs> and then, um, uh, my cause I've been speaking with over at Silver Lake Estates working with and then Maine Water uh, basically uh, got the thing going by saying look we'll put up a, a certain amount of money for a grant a small grant uh, and then we went to the town and, and the town matched it and a little bit more and they needed a manager and since we've been doing this at Toddy Pond which, by the way, Toddy Pond waters do feed into Alamusic, which feeds into, <laughs> uh, into Silver Lake. So this is all related, and this helps us uh, at Toddy Pond and other lakes. Um, in addition to that, uh, this year it, um, at Alamusic, which whose waters feed this when you need water, right? Um, pretty interesting, you know, system here. Uh, and um, they, they just this last year. Uh, an invasive plant was found in Alamusic. Now that um, is still in question. We haven't found any more of that particular plant, um, but um, another one's just been sent in as suspicious. So that has really upped, upped the ante as far as the concern here in Hancock County. Um, we don't have any other lakes in Hancock County where we found invasive plants, but now we have. And it's kind of moving north and, and east just like everything that it seems to have to do with climate. Uh, you know, it's getting warmer, and then that makes it easier for the plants to grow. And, and I have seen infested lakes, and it's not pretty. It, and, and just in, in southern Maine, um, an entire lake, uh, just, just chocker block full. And that was a shallow lake, a beautiful lake, um, the one I'm thinking of, but there's quite a few. I think there's, um, I forgot the number, but over 20. Uh, maybe 30, 33 actually, lakes that are infested with something. 
uh, one of the 11 invasives in Maine. So, um, so it's, it's crucial. Now, Silver Lake is special. Every lake's different. Uh, it's a shallow lake, and that makes it more conducive um, to infestation. Um, and it's a popular fishing lake. Um, we found that through the data um, that we picked up um, this summer from the courtesy boat inspection. Um, and it's a well-loved lake. Uh, I knew that before this summer. I mean, you know, um, uh, one thing that we found was um, that most of the boaters, 62%, um, their last lake visited was Silver Lake. So people locally really use it, and they use it a lot over and over. Um, and then the surrounding towns um, within 30 miles um, is, is another um, big um, group of people. And, um, and it, it's mostly local. Um, which is good, which is good. Um, and, but there were still 14% that were from beyond local. And those are the real concern because those are often the ones that might bring in an invasive because they've been to other lakes that uh, maybe have been infested. And that is, seems to be, um, I mean, I don't think they can prove this, but it's fairly well um, accepted that probably the biggest way to spread uh, an invasive plant from lake to lake is probably from boats going lake to lake. Now, you know, a uh, goose can land on your lake and, and maybe have some on its feet or something like that, but that's why the boat inspections are so important. And not only do we inspect boats coming in, uh, we can't do it every, every hour that people are uh, launching, but uh, we do a lot of education as well and give out brochures and such. And just the, the fact of somebody being there, people say, we appreciate you doing this. And uh, it's sort of a presence thing. And we kind of um, assume, I think we've heard it many times, if someone thinks there might be an inspector there, even though there may not be that hour that they launch, um, they're probably going to come with a clean boat. And Toddy Pond's been doing this for quite a few years. Uh, and every year, the, my inspectors tell me, uh, the boats are cleaner every year, you know, so people get it now, um, and it's very important. Um, so I think I'll pass it on to someone else. Um, oh, and one thing I want to say is it's not just boat inspection. There's three levels, uh, three things we can do to, um, to protect the uh, lake. And the other thing, say, at Toddy Pond we do, and we were talking about it here, um, is um, water quality um, testing, and we're and we're still working on that because it requires a pretty expensive oxygen meter uh, and some of the other lakes um, are doing that. It requires certification. It's kind of complicated. So we weren't able to get that off this summer. Um, and the other thing is what I call plant patrol. Um, there's a, a big volunteer base. We have 28 people doing it on Toddy Pond um, that go out and sort look at a certain area that they're assigned, a sector, uh, and check just to see if there's any uh, invasive plants. And the idea is that um, if, if you catch it early, um, that it's a lot easier to do something about it than letting it get very well established and then trying to um, mitigate. And then it can be cost hundreds of thousands of dollars um, where it could be very manageable if you catch it really early. So familiarity with your lake is what that's all about. Um, and then, of course, boat inspection. So those three things. And um, we did plant patrol. Um, we had a, um, uh, I guess you call it, workshop um, that was, again, Hancock County Soil and Water sponsored and Silver Lake Estates. Um, he has a pontoon boat. Some people went out on the pontoon. A few of us went out on the kayaks and uh, did a couple of hours of training. And then um, also as a volunteer and with Hancock County Soil and Water, I've gone, the last three years, I've been um, doing a lot of surveying on the lake uh, itself. And I, in the last three years, the, I've been surveyed the entire perimeter of the lake um, and with some others, and um, we keep an eye on the landing as well. Just, um, we, we do that on a lot of other lakes in Hancock County. So I hope I haven't hogged this thank, too much. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Uh, in a couple of minutes, um, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to go to audience questions to start. But uh, I'm sorry, but I am really old, folks. And there goes my Larry King persona. But um, thank you, Catherine. Um, so I want you to think. And so how that will work is 
I'm going to ask you to come forward to the microphone so we can have you on the mic and visually. And uh, so I'm going to go to you, Hans, because you've been mentioned as a catalyst. And um, so if you care to comment on this, anything. I heard a report has been issued and you know, do you want to say anything? I think this is a report you mentioned, Lucy, that you put out on the Silver Lake Courtesy Vote Inspection Program 2022. I'll leave it over here for anybody who wants to take a look at it. Um, I, I think pretty much everything has been said as a catalyst. I don't really have a lot of scientific background to bring to this or would it? What? Nancy my, is giving me messages. Um, I wanted I'm, to I'm gonna ignore make the, sure. I'm going to ignore the body language, okay? <laughs> um, the, so, so, um, but we I, can get a copy. I mean, we can make copies of that. Right? The, who, did, who else did you send that to, uh, Lucy? The town. You know, so you've got it, Sue. So, I mean, that so, theoretically, this could go on the town, so the we town will, website. Yeah. We um, will um, um, have some dissemination of that. Yeah. Um, and my, uh, my main interest for me has been to make this happen. And I feel tremendously heartened by what's happened this summer and what's happening right here tonight. I think the big challenge, I'm not sure my cause has gotten enough, I see it as a three-legged stool or whatever, the town, the water company, and the experts in the background, but the boots on the ground is what has been missing so much here. I know there were friends of Silver Lake in bygone years, and that's, um, I'm not going to ask if any of them are here, I'm not going to ask them to speak, but this is a new day. That organization is not functioning anymore for all kinds of good reasons. Um, so we are starting sort of fresh, and this is where, to my mind, and um, um, I went looking for people who actually lived on the lake, like your lake, Lucy, and other lakes. I know the pe people on Alamusic Lake. They have cottages all around the lake with interested people out in their boats and doing all this testing. The only people I found living on the lake were a group of wonderful community people out at Silver Lake Estates out here. And so in my mind, they are potentially the guardians of Silver Lake. And Mike, I know you, t I don't want to speak for you, you speak enthusiastically about that. So the challenge as we go ahead is going to be to somehow help make that happen. I've talked to Mike some. We really need to lift the burden off Potty Pond's shoulders for expediting. They were the conduit for the town gave funding. Maine Water Company gave funding to pay the courtesy boat inspectors this summer. But we didn't have a, I don't know what the technical term is, a um, organization that could issue paychecks and that kind of thing. And that's one C3. Okay, so uh -huh. just to be clear, um, we're going to go to questions from the floor, and I'm going to ask you to come up. Mike, okay. when we come back from the floor, I'm going to be coming to you for your sharing, so you are not forgotten, even though you're to my left, okay? Uh, so uh, I, I noted, how many people are running for office here tonight? Just one. Okay, uh, Tracy here, if you'll come forward and speak into the microphone. And uh, we're going to... Uh, I'm short, so I always have to add things. Um, I have two questions kind of folded into one. I'm really interested to hear. First of all, thank you. This is exciting. Mike, you're awesome. I love that. Um, how long does it take from the initial inspection, so say you find an invasive plant, for it to become a crisis for it. I mean, I know you're saying it's red alert when you find one, but what's A to the lake's got to be completely hauled, overhauled? How like, about what's the we timeline? go to our, um, our, I keep wanting to say the, the future superintendent. No. I, I, okay. <laughs> He, he's probably, he or she are probably not watching me tonight anyway, so you're in good shape. But can you speak briefly to that, those two questions? I'll let MJ handle that. She's a water quality specialist. Okay. On that, on that field, so. But I'm not letting you off the hook. Okay. I'm coming back to you after I get my, Mr. Haas. 
So do you want to handle it? And let's keep our responses as brief as we can because I'm watching the clock and we're going to end promptly at 8.15 tonight. So um, gotcha. you're on. Okay, that's a great question. So initially one plant, if you could get to that plant and see it and know that it's an invasive plant, get it out of there, that, that would be the best case scenario um, for an infestation. But typically, you're not gonna see just one plant. It's not gonna stand out. So usually by the time you see your first plant uh, in uh, invasive location, it's big enough for you to go, hmm, that doesn't look right to me. And at that point, it's also traveled. Pieces break off and they travel. So you're gonna be continuously looking for where those pieces ended up and started to root itself. So it's important to get um, eyes on, you, you have a clear lake right now more than likely. It's important to stay vigilant um, from here on in to keep it, keep it at bay. It's very expensive, very time consuming, lots of effort. I've been a, you know, I've, I've run a section harvester, I've that was my pulled. second question. What's involved in it, cleaning up a bad it, situation? You know, I've put down benthic barriers. I've built them. It is a huge, huge, huge effort, and it takes a lot of money, a lot of effort, and it's almost you're just chasing it all the time. Um, to have an eradication is a very rare event. So. And when you're cleaning a lake, does it affect the water source temporarily with that it process? It can because or? you're you're muddying up the waters per se, which is nothing we want to happen um, coming into the plant. So important to, in, in, important to stop it before it happens. Uh, come before us in terms of plants to try and eradicate infestations in some lakes have been drastic. They've been chemical, they've been killing everything and starting over. I, I, I mean, it, depending on what and where, um, it, it becomes a, it's nothing <laughs> that we want to ever do with Silver Lake, but the, the number of lakes um, in Maine that that has already happened to is more than one. I, I mean, the, the development of, of technology or um, when it comes to chemical solutions, it's gotten to a really bad place, but, but that is happening now in some areas of Maine where the lakes have gotten infested and nobody was watching. You know, there was no eyes on it. Thank you. And, yeah. I, and I would like to allay a little bit of fear. Um, any chemical use in a lake that is a public water supply needs permission of the public water supply. So Thank you. There's nothing we want to go down. I the want to see if there's another question from the floor. Uh, if you would come forward, this is our friend, Mr. Peterson. Hi, Dick Peterson, Bucksport, Maine. I want to thank everyone here. It's a good board. But I want to talk to Maine Water, okay? You might think I might have something negative to say. I do not, all right? I lived in Saco for many, many years. And when Maine Water took over, okay, I had this thought, well, what's happening down here? Maine Water's done an excellent job, all right? Beautiful job down at Saco. I move up here, and what do I find? Maine Water, okay? The water quality is excellent, all right? Just absolutely excellent. The only complaint I have for Saco is their pressure's too low compared to up here. It's wonderful here, okay? That's all I wanted to say. You folks do an outstanding job. Truly appreciate it. Thank you for everything you do. I'm looking, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for question number three from the floor. Come on, folks, let's move this along. Okay. Uh, this is not a plant. She's really asking, okay? <laughs> no pun intended. So, hello, my name is Johanna Valenzuela, and uh, I do work here at Brown Hall, but um, I'm also happy to attend these programs and excited to get to know you guys and hear what's going on in the world. Um, 
So, ironically enough, I've been making a goal for myself to get out on the water with my family. I'm very excited. My uncle is gifting to me the very canoe I grew up on. And uh, Silver, Lake, Silver Lake is just around the corner from us. So as an interested community member, what steps might I take? Who might I approach first um, to take part in some kind of volunteer effort in the monitoring? Who wants to field that one? I, 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 I can't believe nobody's going to talk. All right. Mr. Hawes, would you please respond? I would say probably Lucy, right? <laughs> Surrey Rings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or myself once we, we get going with this program. Um, I'm sure we can find, find uh, some resources for you and, and get some training um, to help you out to identify some of the, the species of plants. There's a lot to it. Sure, and for those watching tonight, or later in the archives that may also be interested, is there an email address that one might contact you at? I can answer that. Contact Brown Hall, 469-3333. And I noticed she didn't say that she's my executive assistant. <laughs> and I'm gonna have speed dial my therapist afterwards and just process it. But. Uh, uh, what I think we're trying to do here, if you go out to the bulletin board and how to build a community, that's what we're trying to do here. Information, not finger pointing, but really trying to uh, get what we need to know and work from where we are. So um, I am interested in your perspective now. Can you describe a little bit about what you've developed there at Silver Lake Estates, please? Sure, like as far as the community? What, so, what, whatever you yeah, wish so, to say. So we have uh, 43 lots down there, and I mean, we probably have a population, I would say, of oh, probably 70, 75 people, um, mostly retired. Um, and they all enjoy, uh, almost all of them enjoy, you know, boating on the lake. Um, so I think we'll have a lot of volunteers down there, and we already have some interest. Um, we do have boats down there also for, for people to use. Um, we have a, a small launch for people to launch kayaks or whatever safely um, in a dock down there. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this, though. Um, I, I love love Silver Lake. Um, I'm really involved with water quality. I've actually taken the water operator to course um, because we have a water system down there also. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of know a little bit about that, of the treatment and how it works and how important it is um, to make sure that the quality is, is good in that lake. Um, it can mess up pretty quick and pretty easy, so. So you we have a community yes. with access to Silver Lake yes, somehow. Yep, yep. And um, with the need for housing and all of the things that we're also right, yeah. grappling with yeah. here. Yes, I, I yes, Sue, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> all the things we're grappling with. Yeah. So, um, for example, besides people having their own individual homes, right? Uh, do you have anything like a community room or activity area? Yes, we do. We have a, uh, a community hall. Um, it's got a nice kitchen so they can do dinners and functions and meetings and uh, a, a lot of the um, different organizations around Foxport you know, use that building. Sure. So um, and it's, it's always welcome to people that, you know, like this, you know, you could do these things and, um, and we do appreciate the use of this building also. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a good place to, it's like you said, building community, and that was the, the biggest reason we built that community. It's, uh, it's very right. nice. So. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to get a property owner's perspective, yeah. particularly right. a developer. Right. Right. And uh, it sounds like it's, um, it's a lot of good stuff that is going yes. on there. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I should have looked at your hat and known you were from Silver, right. you know, but you, 
you know, my peripheral vision is probably off tonight. But uh, so what I see happening, back to Johanna's question, is we're going to make this information available because that's who we are, Brown Hall. Yes? So I would like to address your question. Um, one of the things um, where we're asking people to consider volunteering, there is um, an organization um, that I mentioned earlier that used to be called the Volunteer Lake Monitors, um, and that is called the Lake Stewards of Maine now. And that organization um, does train volunteers for water quality monitoring, boat inspections, and um, in, in plant patrol as well. They have programs throughout, um, throughout the summer, mostly, mostly summer, late spring, um, where they go to different lakes and, and train people. So that is something where if, if we had a list of people who are volunteers and when those trainings become available, we can rally the, rally the troops basically to attend those sessions or maybe even convince them to have a session because we have enough people um, to, to, that want to that take some training. Um, in addition, um, I would also like to mention is that this year, Maine Water and the town of Bucksport did put in monies um, to get this effort off the ground um, because we were too late for state grant money. Um, and that is something that we will be cognizant of next year to make sure that we have an application for grant money in time um, to actually receive some of those monies. So, and, you know, I think the commitment on Maine Water um, is real, and we really um, will continue with our, with our um, assistance to, to keep this program uh, going forward. So. Um, you know, it'd be great to have a list of, of people. And you have children who can be great little inspectors too. Um, and so it's citizen scientists, right? And you don't have to be a biologist. You don't have to be a chemist. You can really, um, you don't have to be a plant expert because there are plant experts who can help you. So don't be afraid um, that, that, you're, that you don't have a biology degree or anything. You don't need that. Um, all you have to do is have an interest, a love for the lake and the water, and enjoy being out on it and, um, and just observing. It's, it's a great time um, to, to spend with your family and observing. So um, in terms of what Brown Hall can do, as I see it, besides disseminating information, factual information, right? um, it would seem to me that um, we will do referrals. So if you can let Johanna know how, who or what we need to be in, putting people in touch with, because I don't know, is the training uh, on site mostly, or do you need space to do training? Well, typically they want to be in that, typically um, they will want to be in that community. Um, so I think um, Mr. Hawes is, um, community room is probably some place where we could do um, the training as far as um, you know the, the more of the the um, inside stuff and then head out um, and to the to the lake um, and, and do some hands-on training there as well that sounds it's online now as well what what is it, it's online uh, now uh, after COVID. Uh, so there's two components: an online uh, that anybody can do right at home, uh, and uh, and then also an on water component. As that's part of the training for to be a plant patroller or shit, invasive uh, for water quality that does require on water certification, uh, and then courtesy boat inspection. Uh, we've paid people, but there um, um, most most organizations like ourselves. Uh, also use volunteers and for a couple hours or five hours, whatever, uh, or, or that usually three to four actually for volunteers. Uh, and that, uh, you know, we do training um, that doesn't take very long. So uh, I do wanna, if I can, um, I do wanna mention that um, most of the courtesy boat inspection programs and plant patrol is handled through some kind of lake organization or friends of group and Hancock County doesn't have very many, only maybe about 
five or six lakes are really organized enough, and including Toddy Pond. Um, it's a lot of work altogether, I have to say, but, um, but it, there is help. <laughs> and uh, Hancock County Soil and Water is trying to support, uh, as well as training, as, um, to help people get started. Uh, I think it's called uh, Lake Society of Maine. Um, th there's there's um, resources out there. Uh, well, there's Lake Stewards of Maine. There, there's really quite a few. DEP is very supportive. Um, it, it really is, uh, there's a lot of resources out there, a lot of uh, approaches. D the, the courtesy boat inspection, for example, uh, that whole program is set up by DEP. So um, there's a lot of interface there. But uh, it would be great if the local community could somehow pull together something that looks like a lake association or a friends of group. They used to have one, but not any longer. Um, and um, there is some kind of affiliation required for, there is funding available for DEP. Um, it, it could be as little as $1,000 to start, maximum 2000 which isn't very much, but um, Toddy Pond does, we've gotten grants um, from other sources as well. Um, and our own um, organization supports it, but um, it, it, it really, <laughs> to have an effective program, it really does take some kind of association that's pretty well focused on the lake. Um, so if I'd really encourage somehow to, right. if your community can pull that together. Toddy Pond Association, we are actually looking um, to maybe um, find a regional organization that we can actually pay to run our courtesy boat inspection program. It's a lot of work. It's getting to be a little bit more than volunteers can handle. Um, and we already pay somebody, which is myself right now. Um, and, um, and then um, it's, it's, you know, that, that is part of a, what grant. We, I wanted to help, and Hancock Soil and Water wanted to see Silver Lake get going, because there was a lot of interest in just pulling it all together. So we tried to, you know, quickly do this, got it rolling, um, you know, within a matter of a couple of weeks, a week or two, uh, to show the community what could be done. Uh, but basically at this point, it's up to the community to continue it and like support from Hancock Soil and Water, we can help, but we can't actually run your program anymore. So sure. um, right. that, that I wanted to make clear. Thank you. Yeah. So we will, just a second, I'll be right to you. Um, so to be clear, if you give us the information, web links, whatever, there are cards over on that table, and Johanna's on the back of the card, and if you can just get the information to her, we will help to, because one person can't do it all, one organization cannot do it all. It really is about a community coming together, and it's wonderful. Mr. Peterson. Many of us have smartphones now. Does Maine have an app that you can take a picture of whatever is growing around the lake and identify that here in Maine? Seems to me that would be a natural way in which someone like myself, not my wife, she's a marine biologist from way back, but someone like myself that wouldn't know, oh, it looks pretty. Oh, wait a minute, should that be there? I can take a picture and immediately know. I'm just wondering if anyone's tried to develop that. Thank you. Yes, I've seen people do that with uh, terrestrial plants. <laughs> you know, just take a picture of it and then the, the app tells you just what it is. And uh, we don't have that yet through Lake Stewards of Maine. Um, they certainly do have all sorts of other resources uh, online. Um, but um, I, I, I'm sure that's coming down the line. I'm not aware of it exactly like you, what you're saying. Thank you for uh, uh, volunteering our, our uh, beloved town manager. Uh, I, so. I, I do know that there are some resources that, that Lake Stewards of Maine have created, like little waterproof picture um, cards that you can take with you on, on the boat. 
Also, if you did identify after taking the training something that you thought might be a suspicious plant, um, they have a mechanism for sending in the plant to have someone identify it there um, whether or not it's invasive. Um, so there are mechanisms for getting that plant identified where you don't have to find a, a botanist to do that. You can just work with um, some of the, some of the, some of the um, documents that they've created and then and it's on the website too. There's some nice pictures, r really graphic pictures of these plants. Um, and like I said, you can send them in and, and have a someone actually look, yeah, look at them. Hancock's County Soil and Water has a botanist uh, specialist, PhD specialist, used to work for DEP as the aquatic plant uh, specialist. So we've got that person right here in Hancock County, he answers you fast and you, we can get a plant to him and um, that's, that's not a big problem. <laughs> So, so back to back to the resources, right? Right. So if you, we will refer, we will disseminate the information, and um, you know we will make known how people can volunteer. I think that uh, with an early release day, if we could imagine uh, uh, steam, which is science technology. What's the E, Catherine? I forget. Engineering. Engineering and the arts, and I don't remember what. Mathematics. Mathematics. So I think that there's ways to make this work and encourage particularly <laughs> young women uh, to go into science or to experience science or to be exposed to science. So I'm very excited by what I've heard. I'm calling on my friend, Nancy Minot. I, I think there are all kinds of possibilities. I think that, you know, that there, the, the underlying question though is who organizes this? Who, who does this reaching out to, to all these possibilities? And maybe this isn't the place at this moment to figure out what that structure is or what that is, but it does take a lot of, you know, a, lo a lot of work. My other question really more to Sue because I don't know much about water and so that Maine Water and that Ames also owns or has, does Ames have a stake in, in Silver Lake being clean? Or I, I'm just curious like what their piece is in it or not. AIM has the legal right to extract X number of gallons of water. They have water rights to the water in the lake to a certain gallon in the same way sort of that Maine Water does. They, 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 however, own the dams and the pipeline connects the three um, bodies of water, but their, their, their rights to water relates to the former use of that water when it was a mill, and the whole oceans project is is contracted to use water from Silver Lake and the young fish when that starts, but not anywhere to the extent that the mill used the water when it was um, in operation. Mm -hmm. it was right. 18 million gallons of mm -hmm. right. over yeah. some period of time. Yeah, the, back when the mill was operational, they were pulling up to 15 million, 18 at their peak, I think, and per day. And, and a separate, in, they have a separate intake from us that's on, get, kind of in this separate cove there. And they had their own pump house and everything that was directly into the mill. And they still have that infrastructure. It's very old and antiquated infrastructure, but it's still there, and they plan to use it for the salmon place. The same structure. Same structure. Same structure. And uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So would they be part of, like, financially supporting any of this? I mean, if, if it, like, or does it matter to them if the water is clean or not? If it got totally infected, would that harm oh, I'm, I'm sure it would. Their, their outtake? Or like they actually did some water quality testing with us like a year ago, a couple years uh -huh. ago, where they put some monitors in what we were bringing into the plant, and they were monitoring numerous parameters to see kind of where things were at. 
because they sell the water to Stone. The plan is to sell the water to whole oceans, and so it will need to be at a certain uh -huh. cleanliness. <laughs> so, but the eventual discussion has been that um, AIM would sell the those rights and the dams and the pipeline to whole oceans. I, I mean, that's been that was part of the discussion depending on how the development went over time and what it's done thus far is nothing, but the, the plan discussed that AIM never had a long-term interest in owning and operating. They bought the property, they on the site, they now retain the ownership of the landfill and the ownership of the um, water rights and the dam infrastructure. So it, their long-term plan isn't to be that owner, I don't think, over time. If they can find a user large enough to support the um, water coming from the Thank you, Mr. Bowd. Thank you. I appreciate so cool. it. Um, I would say the same to you, Mr. Haas. If you have an event training or anything that's going on of interest to the community, if you will take our card um, <clears throat> and get it to us, we will help to promote it in whatever way that we may. I think the, as many of us that can get involved in this is critical. It's now. Well, as executive assistant here at Brown Hall, I will happily Thank volunteer <laughs> to make this available, this information available in this, this video, in the video description. You can uh, look below and we'll connect the links there for you to find easily. Right, anyone that wants a copy of the town report, if you call our office, we will see that you get it free and postage paid. So uh, just let us know. But it takes, it takes a village to take care of itself. So I'm looking at the clock. One more. I have a, just a, if we have an audience in the room and an audience beyond the room, people looking that, um, Nancy's question is a good one. This is, is how, do we, how do we make this go? We partnered so that we could see how this would work in Bucksport, and if it was, if it went well, and but and it did, which means the next step is an organization locally. Um, the town doesn't have staff to do this uh, extensive, but if anyone is interested in being a volunteer for the program, the town can provide an infrastructure that we did not have in place in terms of paying a boat monitor and having a budget, all those kind of things. But we're, we're ahead of that curve in the way that if enough people, and this is really, if there's enough people, it, it, people have to get involved if they want this to work. And so I'm encouraging anyone who's interested to go through the contact process that's been outlined here and we will organize a, a, a meeting to talk about what this would look like, how it would work, and how all these pieces sitting here can continue to work together, um, but in, an, in a way that's Silver Lake focused and not as an auxiliary to Toddy Pond, which is sort of what we were. Which I'm initially. hearing you want relief. Yeah, yeah. It's just for this year. Okay, so I'm going, When we had the Bucksport Next meeting here last May or whatever, um, I did get a number of people who are interested. There are other people, Colleen Gross, you mentioned earlier, talked to you and is interested in being part of this in a helpful way. What we lack is that one person who's, well, now I talked to you yesterday, Mike, your, your enthusiasm is just infectious. It's really great, but you don't have time to say, do grant writing or 
set up a 401, whatever the organization is that we need. And I'm not sure, Sue, how much of that can be done by what you're saying the town can do in terms of setting up the organization that can funnel any money. Um, but we don't have the one person who, who is really going to drive that through. I'm, I'm willing to help. I've told Mike that I will help him on whatever he does. Um, the town okay. can act as a fiscal agent for right. a group that is um, doing this. We do this for a num we've done this for a number of local organizations that prior to them getting 501c3 status or even organizations such as Wednesdays on Main that never attained that status. Mm -hmm. We're the fiscal agent that pays their bills and and is the when you're applying for a grant who's your fiscal sponsor is a question and for for a, a group that was a civil like whatever it, it wouldn't necessarily even have to be a 501c3 if the town is its fiscal agent and then paying the bills and collecting money is <laughs> We're really good at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, that. I that will withhold comment. It, it, well, you can like it, you can hate it. We're effective. The, the point being that we don't need additional staff to act as a fiscal agent. In, and what we need is the, the Wednesdays on Main version responsibilities um, and Hancock County you know there, there are resources that will help a group write grants and do those kind of things so I think that that just getting a nexus of people who stay committed to to doing this and and four is not enough you know it, it, Mike's got a hostage group <laughs> in his <laughs> development that are interested and excited about this idea and that's even if a third of them decided to do that that's like 20 people you know so I, I think that there's a way to make this work but but I would say that it's it's almost October um, we need a plan for how this works by February I, I mean we, we need to be able to done that by then, or we're going to be behind the eight ball again, like we were this year. I think you're making an ass of it now. Thank you. So um, we've heard, um, I want to uh, in invite the audience now to thank our guests for being here tonight. So um, a couple of things I want to make you aware of. One is um, that on, I've got to look at the calendar. My calendar can really get lost in the shuffle here. Um, so on, um, on Monday, no, excuse me, on Tuesday, October 18, the Bucksport Enterprise uh, will, um, will be sponsoring uh, time with the candidates. My understanding is that the uh, town council candidates will go first and then because there's a school board meeting, the uh, school board candidates will be here at eight o'clock. So, that will be a <clears throat> seven to nine o'clock. I would allow that hour and a half. And uh, then, but I'm not doing it, folks, because I'm a political independent and um, I don't endorse. And I find, you know, I don't put signs on my car or any of that stuff. Other people do, but in my position, I'm trying to build communities, so I don't do that. Um, I do vote. Thank God it's a secret ballot, right? So, um, 
And then on the 27th, which is a Tuesday, um, I will be moderating the uh, candidates for the state house and state senate races. And um, so all of them have agreed to be here. And it will be, again, um, a nonpartisan letting people talk about, you know, why they're running, who they are, and all of that. So if you'll put those on your calendar, that would be um, helpful. Um, I think just stay in touch with what's going on in Brown Hall because we really are trying to not only build community but also to you know promote all the good work all of you are doing and I thank you all tonight for being here for those of you who are watching by way of the internet this will be posted if you wish you have any of this information, contact our office and my executive assistant, who finally confessed to that, is, is going to uh, take your information. We'll provide the town report and we will report out on anything that anyone's doing that is non-ideological, non-partisan, and believe it or not, non-theological. So this is a place where everybody can get help or come together. Um, I'm gonna ask you now to join me in thanking again our audience, and uh, then I'm gonna invite you to go over to the table and have some refreshments. If you care to support that effort, there is a coffee can there in which you could put a contribution in. It's not required but it does help us to keep doing things like we're doing here tonight. So, yes. You'll be pleased to know that most things that are going on in Brown Hall are in the Ellsworth America, Ellsworth American every week, thanks to Johanna. Uh, there is also a Facebook page currently tied to the church, but it's our intention to separate that and have a Facebook page for Brown Hall. Um, <clears throat> secondly, um, the, uh, we put in a large ad in the Bucksport paper. And um, so we are reaching out on those venues. So that's the best answer. I'm not going to get into who said what, why, and how. Oh no, I'm in trouble. When, you, when you do register your boat, in the spring, a motorized boat, you do get a sticker that you're required to put on your boat, um, and you get information about invasive plants at that time. So, um, we're not doing it perfectly, but we are doing it. 
and I'm not going to comment on who's here or not here tonight. Okay, I know something for this coming forth. What is it? Well, I guess <clears throat> your answer to your question was that um, we're promoting this event on our Facebook page and we're promoting the event in the community, but is it possible to have an article written on the information that was, you know, if people aren't going to watch this video, <clears throat> is there another way we can get this information out to the community in the form of a, um, like a press we're, release? We're working on it. We're so, on it. without further ado, I, I invite you to go to the table. There is a coffee can there if you care to give and support what we're doing. There's tea, there's other stuff. And it's been a long day for me, so I'm going to get my wife to get me home sooner than later so I may, you know, refresh. But I thank all of you for coming tonight. All right. All right, this has been the uh, Elm Street Congregational Church, which sponsors the Brown Hall Community Center and, and a non-partisan, non-religious way to promote civility and collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Stephen York, and I thank you for joining us.